In this third installment of my series on the Roborock S6 Max-V, I'll be testing how well it avoids obstacles like shoes, a weighing scale, toys, wires, and Play-Doh that will replicate pet waste. The purpose of this video is to show you the capabilities and limitations of the obstacle avoidance feature so you'll be able to maximize its functionality and have a better user experience. Take note that the camera can see an object with a minimum dimension of 3cm tall and 5cm wide. For more information about the Roborock S6 Max-V, please check the links below. If you haven't done so, please subscribe and tap the bell icon to get notified when I publish new reviews. And now, let's get started. One of the biggest upgrades that Roborock put in the S6 Max-V is the front-mounted stereo camera that can process images up to 30 frames per second. This camera is paired with a reactive AI software that is powered by a Qualcomm APQ8053 processor. This combo helps the S6 Max-V to be one of the best navigating robots I've tested, and the camera gives it another layer of technology that helps it avoid obstacles that earlier versions like the S5 Max cannot. Even if the weighing scale is less than half an inch tall, which is below the minimum threshold of 3 cm, the camera was able to detect and avoid colliding with it. While the S5 Max that doesn't have the camera went over it several times. So this brief comparison shows you what this technology is capable of. If you look closely at the app, the camera correctly identified the obstacle in the map as a weighing scale. Another obstacle it will avoid is shoes. Aside from a few light bumps, the S6 Max-V was able to avoid it completely throughout the cycle. Contrast that to the S5 Max that doesn't have the camera and you can clearly see how it makes a difference when it comes to avoiding things like this. I also tried putting the shoe on the edge to see if the camera detects it and it was able to do so, completely avoiding it. I also tested it on slippers and it did fairly well. It avoided the gray one on the right side of the screen and even though it initially bumped into the pair on the left, it was able to avoid it afterwards. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this. This next test is for parents out there with kids who have lots of Lego. On the left side is the Crusher, which is my son's biggest Lego toy, and on the right is a smaller police pickup truck. Initially, the camera was able to detect the truck on the right, but it eventually bumped into it. Strangely, it didn't seem to know what object the Crusher is, and it didn't register on the map. So my conclusion here is just to tidy up these types of toys before running this robot. Since we don't have pets, I didn't have any pet ways to test and see if the S6 Max-V will completely avoid it. But even if I did, I wouldn't dare test it on the real thing. So I use Play-Doh to see if it'll detect it as poop and if it avoids it. To answer the first question, yes, the S6 Max-V was able to detect the Play-Doh as pet waste and it initially avoided it. But unfortunately, it brushed against it as it was turning. So make sure to pick up pet feces before using the robot as cleaning it can be disgusting and tedious. If there's one thing that the S6 Max-V won't be able to avoid, it's cables and wires. It's not only an issue with the S6 Max-V, as all robots in general will struggle navigating around it. One factor preventing robots avoiding wires is the side brush, as the wires will wrap around it and oftentimes stops it from moving forward. The S6 Max-V to its credit will try to power through wires, but I would recommend tidying these things up. This is one advantage that robot vacuums that don't have a side brush like the Neato D3, but it comes at the expense of edge cleaning. One common question in forums like Reddit is whether or not it can avoid black or dark objects. So I put it through a test using a pair of black shoes, a tape dispenser, and a GoPro case. To answer the question, yes, it was able to avoid all of these objects without any problems, but take note that I tested it in a well-lighted room. It may not do as well on areas that don't have as much light. And remember that the camera on this robot needs a certain amount of light and contrast to function its best. To get the most out of the S6 Max-V, make sure to remove excess clutter such as wires, spa slippers, and toys. This robot is pretty smart and doesn't require as much babysitting as a robot vacuum with a standard navigation. If you have any questions about this robot vacuum, do send them in in the comments section and I'll answer them as soon as I can. 
Please like, subscribe, and tap on the bell icon if this video has answered your questions about how this robot navigates. And thank you for watching. Thank you.